What is up everyone, it is Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at a Lycan gameplay, specifically Mintama Man's Lycan gameplay in a recent series against Nigma. He popped off, had an incredible game, and I think a lot of the adjustments he makes are a big reason why this works. The main reason why I want to make this video here today is I did some research on, you know, what heroes I haven't made videos for, and um, Lycan was one of them. So I'm like, okay. No, I don't have a liking video. This is one of my favorite heroes personally, just because of its versatility and ability to just have so much impact when played properly. So yeah, I'm like, okay, let's go over a recent game where Secret picked it. Fourth pick into Ursa, Pugna, Spearbreaker, and Earthshaker. So not a lot of AoE control. They couldn't really deal with the units. And that is an optimal liking game, a game in which they cannot stop you from just running them over, especially when there's a lack of AoE damage that we see from the side of Enigma within this match. But yeah, if you guys are excited for this and you like my videos, then like my videos. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I actually do appreciate it a ton. If you could take the time really quick before we hop into the video to do those two things. The first one is obviously to like the video. You just have to click the thumbs up. Hopefully we can get around, I'm going to say 2000 likes. Uh, we've been doing even better than that lately, which is really cool. The videos have been doing well. And I hope you guys are enjoying and still learning because overall, that's the goal. I hope to make successful YouTube videos that are successful in two regards. You know, they, they do well on YouTube, but they also help you guys learn about the game. And the second thing I want to mention is if you're interested in learning about something like Beastmaster Jungle or a hero like Monkey King, if you want to learn the ins and outs of Monkey King or just other complex topics right, that I don't always talk about here on YouTube, I recommend you go to the link down below and you check out the Game League website. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Now is the day to sign up. Today's the day. I want you to try it out. All right. You can always get a refund. Well, not always. I'm sorry. That is not what you can get a refund <laughs> based upon the refund policy, which is very, very flexible. We are a nice group of people and we're looking to help everyone get better at Dota. All right. Now let's get into the game. So right off the bat, we're going to see that he has tangos, two mangoes and a salve as well as, you know, filler items, the quilling blade branches and this is the item build i'd recommend you guys go every single game not because it's necessarily optimized for every single game however what i will say is that this build is very well rounded for lycan your hero needs hp regen because you're not buying headdress anymore which is something i'm going to talk about in a bit and you need hp regen and mana regen for walls and then you know the quelling blades just for last hitting of course and the stats are just filler help you a little bit with your mana problems now the reason why you're not going to be buying headdress anymore on this hero is that headdress has gotten nerfed actually quite a bit do I think it still can be legitimate? Yes, but the item went from 2.5 mana regen and 375 gold to now 425 gold with only two regen. Far worse. Far, 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 far worse. Now, the reason why it was such a good item on Lycan is because he would build it into a Helm of the Dominator, but you don't have to do that. In fact, I want to look at the team of Nigma and ask you a question. Why would Matama Man buy a Necro 3 or rush a Necro 3? He didn't buy any other items. He rushed a Necro 3. Why is that good for this game? Hopefully you guys can figure it out. But there's a couple reasons. So number one, they have two sources of ethereal, right? So they have the Decrepify from Pugna and they have the Ghost Shroud from Necrophos. And because of this, he can basically purge both of them. And these heroes generally are okay against Lycan or they can sort of counter him up until a certain point. And that point is his Necro 3 timing because then your Necro 3 Archer, the blue one, purges units. It has a purge and you can purge Decrep and you can purge Ghost Shroud. You also can purge Ursus Overpower. A lot of people don't know this. It's the reason why Enchantress doesn't always do that bad against Ursa. If he overpowers, you can purge it with Enchant. You can purge it with your Archer from, you know, the Necro 3. So he goes for that item this game. In the landing stage, it's very important that the main thing you want to do well on Lycan is make sure you focus last into the Denies, number one. Your hero is not much of a killer. You're more of a, a chip hero and a, a really good last hit and deny hero, right? Because you have about 80 damage in total with the wolves combined. But you want to hit the creeps with your wolves and Lycan at the same time. How do you do that? Well, you sort of have to surround the creep, right? You have to surround the creep. So you see how he does that here? He wraps around, boom, burst the creep. He actually slightly messed it up there, which is why the Oracle got the last hit. But that is the general idea. You were trying to burst the creep. Otherwise, you're giving the enemy an opportunity to deny it or get the last hit, assuming, you know, you're either last hitting or denying. Moving on from there, in very, very easy lanes, this is a very easy lane. Why? Because they are against basically 2v1. The Earth Spirit is fighting the Earth Shaker in the trees, so they're sort of tri-laning in some aspects as well. And because of that, he's going to go aggressive. This is kind of an overall Dota concept. But in this case, what you want to do is Lycan. Instead of using your main hero to harass, you simply help your, your support out, zone the solo laner with your wolves, and then continue to last hit. Now, if it's a dual lane, I generally recommend you just kind of chill back Right, don't get your wolves killed. In dual lanes, it's much, much better that you just focus on CS and denies because otherwise people are going to kill your wolves. And I really think that makes the hero just far worse in lane. You're going to feed away a lot of XP and, and gold. So it's better that you just keep them together and burst creeps. 
One thing to note on Lycan is that you want to get side pulls off as much as possible. So on Radiant, right, on this side of the map, you're going to be want to pulling this camp from here to here. On Dire, you're going to want to pull this camp from here to here. You can actually pull this camp up. You just have to cut uh, this tree right here and you can pull through, right? So you cut the tree, you pull through, and then you could actually farm it in the downside. And and this is two minutes in and Matama Man's going to get a free big camp to himself. You see how big of a deal this is, guys? And this is the case of Lycan. Why? Because you do a lot of damage to creeps. Lycan is probably one of the fastest farmer, if not the fastest farmer in Dota in terms of how fast he can kill a singular camp. And yeah, he just gets a full quarter level off that considering he was splitting it with his Oracle. That is really, really good. And Lycan's strength as a hero is not necessarily items. While he he needs items, I would say Lycan primarily benefits from being a very high level, especially above his opponents. Moving on, the first thing you're going to want to do is just bait out your opponents. There's only a small thing to look at here. He actually messed up. I would argue that he should have died here to some extent. Um, however, his teammates made a really fantastic play. Uh, perfect Fisher. <laughs> he secures the first blood. Uh, but really, I, what I want to look at here is when he's getting chased, look what he does with his wolves, okay? So he's running away with his heroes, right? You notice how he's not running away with his wolves, though? His wolves are hitting Miracle the entire time. This is the additive damage. If he didn't put the wolves on Miracle this entire time, he dies. Miracle, maybe not lives. Eh, maybe he would, actually. Miracle at least gets the first blood, and the whole lane changes. But because he had the wolves on him the entire time, because he sets a hotkey, the hotkey he likely uses is this one, select all other units. It's in the advanced hotkeys. He's able to put the wolves on a miracle and get a first blood. On top of that, let's look at his items really quickly. He's able to pop the self here, and the first items that he buys are the two sages masks. It brings your mana regen all the way up to 3.5, which is extremely good. It's extremely good. This is very high mana regen, and it's going to give you the proper mana to actually use your wolves, not off cooldown, but very close to it. Once you hit level 5, it's like in your wolves gain the ability cripple. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but if you hover over summon wolves and you read a description, at level 3 and 4, wolves have cripple. And what you need to know about cripple is that it's not a slow. A lot of people think cripple is a slow. It's not a slow, guys, for, for all of you that know what cripple is. It is an attack speed slow. Cripple slows attack speed by 60. So every single time your wolves hit, they have a 20% chance to cripple, and it slows attack speed by 60, which is over half of the majority of heroes' attack speed in the early game. And on top of that, it does damage, right? So it does tick damage. So it does damage, and it slows attack speed. And you're going to see that here. Hits level 5, and simply puts his wolves on the Ursa. This Ursa, who used to be able to easily kill them, now gets destroyed by the cripple. He gets ruined by cripple. Like, a lot of heroes, once Lycan hits level 5, just can't lane. You're going to see it here. You see how he's starting to bully him out? He wasn't playing like that for most of the laning stage, right? He, he was, you know, harassing with the wolves here and there, but he wasn't going full aggressive. Now that he is crippled, he is in. And this is how you guys have to see this hero as well. If you get ahead and you hit an early five, simply go hard. And now we're going to see here, ultis. Unfortunately, Miracle makes a god TP, but in your average pub, guys, this is a kill. It's a free kill, right? No one's going to look at like and ulti as, as rupture. People know against Bloodseeker rupture, right? You TP out right away. It's actually the same thing against Lycan for the most part, as long as he doesn't have like a net or a stomp creep if he bought a Helmet of Dominator. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, you actually do TP away from Lycan for the most part. And so yeah, Miracle makes a great play. Pounds TP, keeps himself alive. When you hit six on Lycan, if you hit it before your opponent, you generally want to go for a kill on them, assuming you've been chipping them down at level five as well, right? You chip them at five, you hit six, Go for the kill. It's a really nice cycle. Now, at the six minimark, sorry, seven minimark, he's gotten his Necro 1. Now, what do you do with the Necro 1? And this is where things become really bad for Lycan in terms of the average player. The average player ruins Lycan once they get their Necro 1 or their Helm Dom. Because usually what happens is people get this Necro 1 timing, and what they do is they start just pushing every single tower. They're like, Lycan is a pusher, and if I don't end within the first 15 minutes, we're gonna lose. But in all reality, what you're trying to do as Lycan is actually get ahead. You want to build a significant lead in terms of net worth because your hero shreds camps. So we're going to be watching this clip in normal speed. If you don't trust me, this is 1x speed with three E's. And what you're going to see is that he's actually going to spawn the Necro book, stand in the area, right? The Feral Pulse Impulse Radius so that his creeps get 4 HP regen and 26 bonus damage. And he's going to let the camp instantly die. That is super fast. These camps die unbelievably fast. And you can see that he's actually going to continue to zone the Ursa out and start to flash farm. And this is what you do with Necro 1. You do not worry about being an ulti form, even though the replay is bugged and make it seem like he's ulti. You do not worry about using it only with ulti. Spawn your Necro book off cooldown. This is the best rule of thumb you can have. Spawn it off cooldown. Spawn your wolves to the best of your ability off cooldown and farm every single camp. You see how we killed ancients there? Killed the large camp, killed the small camp, killed the ancients. 
and he's starting to build a net worth lead. Now this Necrophos, who's 1-0 and has been having a god tier lane, is barely ahead of him, and this is a side lane to mid lane matchup, right? That is how fast you farm, and please look at Lycan as a farming hero in the early game. If you have your ult and someone is low or is, is weak against you, you can kill them, but if you do not have ulti, please farm, farm, farm. When you have ulti, look what he does. Siege is a tower. This is the Lycan formula. Ulti? Okay, look for a fight, look to take towers, ulti if they go on you, or if you need to, you know, get a kill. Oh, you, you don't have ulti? Go back to farming. And you're gonna see he's even popping his Howl now, he's taking Howl at level 8, and this is the most standard build that I've seen. You max wolves whenever you can, you fill in Feral Impulse to level 2, then you start taking Howl. Also, one thing I want to note is that Lycan is really good at killing a lot of int heroes. If we just look at the list of Dota heroes and you look at int heroes, Lycan destroys a large majority of them. And because of that, you know, a lot of mid laners are just going to die to you. So one of the best rotations you can make as Lycan is actually killing the enemy mid laner and then taking the tier 1 tower. If you can do this as Lycan, it's like the highest impact play in Dota. So you're going to see him go in the Necro here, not even worried about getting the low net worth Spirit Breaker, much more interested in the big Necro kill. They absolutely surround him and you might be like, well, Speed, this is Team Secret and they have five heroes. This won't happen in my FEA server. But it doesn't matter. Like, you don't need five heroes. I'm saying if you create a 2v1 scenario where it's you and your mid laner, right? Lycan in a mid laner against the other mid laner, you're just going to kill them basically every single time as long as you have your Necro Book and ulti up, right? It's that simple. So make a play on mid when you have your ulti and Necro Book up. Also, one thing to note about this fight is that he's going to disengage. His ulti runs out here. Unfortunately, it's bugged once again, but his ulti runs out, right? He's getting ticked by an Earth Spirit ulti. The fight's looking kind of meh. It's not bad, but the Ursa and the Pugna are pretty strong right now. So that I have to disengage. Is he auto attacking people casually? No. Can you? Yes. If there's someone very much overextended, you can use your basic auto attack to deal damage, but generally you want to disengage and focus on chipping people down with your wolves. Now, after the fight ends, what does he do? He goes back to farming. Guys, can I make this any more simple for you? If you don't have ulti and the fight ends, go back to farming. Kill the camp, TP to a nearby wave, do whatever it takes to hit your next timing before your next ulti comes up. If you can do this, this is what happens every single game. Your hero's pretty reliable in the landing stage, right? You don't lose a ton of matchups as long as you're careful, right? As long as you stay back and focus on CS, you won't lose a lot of matchups. You hit your timings, you start jungling. You're gonna get farmed. And we see the same exact thing here, right? The enemy team sees a mid, they TP to go on him, and he gets out, right? This is what you want to do now because he forces a TP and splits up the enemy team. He actually just can put his Necro 3, a 12 minute Necro 3 onto the Spirit Breaker who's getting life drain but he gets destroyed. My man gets destroyed. Now the decrep comes out, but he gets finished anyway. And you're going to see the power of the Necro 3. He just puts it on the Ursa, like just casually, not even with his main hero. He's, he is trying to stay in Feral Impulse range, right? Because it's 50% damage, which is unbelievably important, right? He is trying to stay in Feral Impulse range, but for the most part, he doesn't want to get Scythe, right? He was very concerned about the potential Scythe. And because of that, he's kiting out, making sure it's not going to happen, right? The Necro goes for the Ghost Shroud. He purges it, and now he runs in. And this is why he wanted it, so he could purge the Necro. And you're gonna always see him kite out. Now that his ulti is out, all he's gonna do is stay back, use his units, cast the Howl, and you're gonna see the Necro just solo dying to his units, and so did the Ursa. And this is kind of how you have to play Lycan in teamfights. You wanna stay ahead, be ahead in net worth, and then pick the targets you can kill, and continue to kite around the fights. So the next thing I wanna note is that he actually did max out Feral Impulse before the Howl. So that's one thing to note, right? Feral Impulse before Howl. However, you do want to take a value point at level 8, as it's a very good value point. Doesn't scale insanely well, to be honest. All right, it just doesn't. It doesn't scale kind of insane. It really doesn't. But it, it scales okay. But I think the, the, the Feral Impulse is a little bit better um, just overall for farming, as, as you're going to constantly have it going. On top of that, he goes through this very cool item build that I was told by a Lycan spammer friend of mine a while ago uh, that is good, where instead of going Helm of the Dom, you actually buy drums second item, and then you pop your active, it's super strong, right? Because not only do you give 20 attack speed passively, which is really good considering you don't have any extra attack speed, right? None of these items give you attack speed. Uh, Howl used to, it doesn't anymore. Now it's an armor reduction spell. Every time you cast Howl, it reduces armor in a very large AOE. And because of that, the drums gives you a nice balance between attack speed and damage. And so, yeah, let's take a look at a fight where he, he just shows off the damage that drums gives, right? So it leads the fight with Howl, instantly reducing the armor of the Necro which brings the Necro's armor, actually, 
unbelievably down, even though he has Guardian Greaves. It's insane how much how much armor reduction is, bringing the Necro all the way down to 7 armor. Pretty crazy. Then, goes in, right, pops the drums, starts auto-attacking with his, all of his units, right? You kind of just, you can just drag over and auto-attack the nearby person. Pops the Ghost Shroud, instantly has a hockey setup, obviously has a control group setup for his Necro Archer. Pops the Purge, just to be clear, guys, this is the Purge ability, I mean, in case you haven't seen it. It's a 15 second cooldown, 600 cast range, 4 second duration, because it slows as well. And he's able to do a ton of damage to this Necro, who doesn't instantly die, but eventually will fall. And that's how you counter out heroes that buy Ghost Scepters. Remember, this works on Ghost Scepter, you actually can Purge Glimmer. Um, I think you can Purge Yules if you time it correctly. You can Purge DDs, you can Purge Haste, you can Purge Bloodlust and Power. There's so many things you can Purge uh, that you should keep in mind when playing Lycan. That is extremely useful. The next thing I want to note is that their team just took Aegis, right? So Secret took Aegis, and I want to ask you a question. Why did they take Aegis and then back? Why did they take Aegis and then back? Weird, right? Most people, when they get Aegis, they just run it down mid. Wouldn't this happen in your pub? But what's the problem? Why can't Secret grow aggressive right now? There's one simple answer here, and that is that Shapeshift is down. You can't fight on Lycan without Shapeshift. You are legitimately 20% as strong as your hero with Ultimate. You are 20% as strong. You have to, you have to, you have to wait for Shapeshift. Tell your team, I can't fight. I don't have Shapeshift. I can't shape the shift. You can't fight. And so instead, what he does without the Shapeshift is he uses his Walls for Vision. Remember, they go invisible. And if you have your move command, you can just make them follow people. And that's what we see here. He puts it on the Necro so they can track down the Necro. His ulti is up in 6 seconds, and then they can look for a fight. This is how you want to play the hero. Huge Echo Slam from Yapsor as well. Uh, absolutely popping off, destroying the fight. Um, he didn't even have to pop his ulti there. They are, to be fair, 10k ahead and had a God Echo. But I guarantee if the Echo wasn't that good, he still would have popped his ulti and been able to fight. Which is all I'm trying to say here. And that's going to be the end of the replay analysis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and you learned a lot about Lycan. If you want to know what happens in the rest of this game, you can click in the replays, but really it ends just two minutes later as they go for a high ground push with the Storm Aegis and there's nothing the enemy team could do. In fact, I'll actually leave you guys with a quick little tip. Lycan's really good at roaching, so if you want to take a roach, you can take, it's pretty good, you know, like you just kill roach really quickly. So if you have a hero that wants Aegis, give it to them. Lycan does not really like Aegis. For the most part, just just don't take Aegis, give it to someone else, because if, if you don't have Shapeshift, you can't fight, right? So if you die in Shapeshift with Aegis and you respawn, you have no ult, and you're kind of useless, so like, just give it to a teammate, but you should help them rush. Thanks for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed and shred some buildings with Lycan, because really the goal is to, you, you build up a network lead, you take some good fights, and then when you win the fights, boom, the base is instead dead, you end. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and uh, peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're gonna see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.